NFTs have the world buzzing thanks to the insane prices they're selling for. But what are they? What do they do? And should you be paying attention to them, much less money for them? Here's what you need to know. In the simplest terms, an NFT, or non-fungible token, is a certificate of authenticity for a digital file. Now that digital file can be anything. It can be a tweet, a JPEG, a GIF, a YouTube video of a basketball player dunking, anything. There are a million GIFs on the internet of Neon Cat, but an NFT allows one person to own Neon Cat. I put own in quote marks because the creator still owns the copyright, so we're talking about ownership in a pretty limited sense here. NFTs are printed on blockchains, which are essentially unchangeable digital ledgers that everyone can access and verify. So if, for example, I dropped $2.9 million on Jack Dorsey's first tweet, which by the way, someone totally did, that then goes onto a blockchain that everyone who wants to can check and see that indeed I own that NFT, if you're into that kind of thing. So it's not that complicated, and if people were dropping the cost of a cup of coffee on NFTs, we wouldn't really be making this video. But since people are dropping the cost of a four bedroom home on NFTs, it's gonna need some explanation. <laughs> NFT, non-fungible token. So essentially, it's just a token that's not fungible. Easy, done. All right, all right, all right. Let's back up. Fungible assets are interchangeable with each other. For instance, gold. An ounce of gold is worth the same price whether it's from a coin in Australia or a nugget in California. Bitcoin is also fungible. While the price of one Bitcoin is volatile from one moment to the next, at any given moment, one Bitcoin is worth the same amount as any other Bitcoin. So, as you might expect, non-fungible assets are not interchangeable with each other. For instance, take cars. One car is not worth the same amount as another car, even if it's the same make, the same model made in the same year. Basically, if fungible assets have a set price, Non-fungible assets are worth pretty much whatever anyone out there is willing to pay for them. Sold to the gentleman for two pounds. This is why all collectibles are considered non-fungible. And it's why a pair of limited edition NERD Adidas sneakers can sell for thousands of dollars. And why a first edition Charizard Pokemon card can sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars. You've probably seen the headlines already, but let me just go through some of the crazier NFT sales just in case you haven't. Remember Bad Luck Brian? The dude in the photo of that meme sold that meme as an NFT for $36,000. The NFT of the Neon Cat GIF I told you about before, that sold for $590,000. What's more, an enterprising chap in New York recently sold a 52 minute audio recording of his farts as an NFT for $400. I know 400 isn't that much when we're comparing it to the thousands and hundreds of thousands we just talked about before, but come on, farts, farts. But maybe the most illustrative example of this whole craze is this slightly disturbing art piece that mixes Pepe the Frog with Homer Simpson. It sold for $320,000. But the price isn't what makes this one interesting. What's interesting about it is that the guy who just sold it is not the guy who created it, rather, he bought it in 2018 for $38,000. That's a tidy profit. 38,000 to 320,000, who wouldn't? And that's exactly why most people are playing this game. It's important to note here that owning an NFT is not the same as owning the piece of work. Buying an NFT does not grant you ownership or copyright rights, it just grants you the NFT, which is kind of bragging rights. Some of the people buying non-fungible tokens are legitimate blockchain enthusiasts who see that technology as the defining technology of that era. They see NFTs as an early application of this revolutionary technology. But most of the people flipping NFTs are doing it to make money, a very familiar motive. That's not to suggest that NFTs are completely useless. They do have some utility. And like most technologies, they're not inherently good or bad. It's really just how they're being used. The biggest NFT sale yet is Beeple's Everydays, a collage of 5,000 digital paintings that was sold as a collage via a Christie's auction for $69 million. $69 million for an NFT? Yeah, that's crazy to me. But it's only slightly more crazy than $40 million for a blank blue canvas, which is something that also happened at a high art auction. What NFTs do, if they do anything, is create artificial scarcity. They take something that you or I could see for free on Google 
and turn it into something that someone out there is willing to pay money for. That's great for an artist like Beeple, who's a real artist with a real following, and he's done work for real companies like Apple, Louis Vuitton, and the Super Bowl. And that's also good for a whole bunch of other digital artists, whose work has historically been hard to monetize because it can mostly be downloaded for free off Google. But again, when NFTs are being used to sell farts, you know everything isn't quite right at internet.com. That leads me to three things you need to be aware of. First, scams. Just like cryptocurrency, where scams are ubiquitous, there are going to be scams everywhere in NFTs. So that could be someone pretending to be an artist, selling an NFT for a work they don't actually own. It could be someone selling an NFT for something of which there is already another NFT. Point being, if you're seeing all the headlines and you want to get in the NFT game to flip a few and earn a few thousand dollars, just be aware that there's a pretty significant chance you'll lose your money. Second, it's really bad for the environment. Blockchains are really inefficient. They take a lot of energy to do pretty much anything. And it's for that reason that more CO2 is emitted from computers mining Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies than the CO2 emitted by the entire countries of, say, Argentina and Switzerland. And finally, a lot of the hype that's surrounding NFTs can be credited to people who already own quite a lot of cryptocurrency. For instance, Jack Dorsey. He sold his first tweet as an NFT for a headline grabbing $2.5 million. Jack Dorsey owns Square, which owns around 8,000 Bitcoins, which are worth over $400 million. And the guy who bought Beeple's Everydays for $69 million, he's a professional cryptocurrency investor. Now there's nothing wrong with any of that, but just know that the NFT bubble that we're currently seeing is being pumped up advertently or purposefully by probably a relatively small amount of people. So are NFTs a flash in the pan? That's exactly what people said when the Bitcoin bubble of 2017, when the price was around $15,000, burst and the price went to $1,000. Now, some years later, Bitcoin hovers between $50,000 and $60,000 with a market cap that exceeds a trillion dollars. But within cryptocurrency, there's a whole bunch, thousands and thousands of what are called altcoins. These altcoins are basically cryptocurrencies that are not Ethereum or Bitcoin, the two biggest. They're essentially penny stocks for cryptocurrency, except they don't really do anything. Even within the community, they're often called shitcoins because of how useless they are. But despite that, every week, handfuls of these currencies rocket and then plummet based off community sentiment alone. Just recently, I saw one go from $2,000 all the way up to $4,000 within the space of about 10 days. It sounds like a game played with flippity floppity monopoly money. But the real world consequence is that some people get very rich when these coins rocket, and then they lose lots of money when they inevitably plummet, like that one did from 4,000 all the way back down to 200. So despite the fact that NFTs make no sense, with people spending six figures on YouTube clips that you and I could watch for free, that doesn't mean you should expect them to go away anytime soon either.